Oh, you're not going anywhere. Uh, the jail conditions were horrible. These cases serve as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of false arrests on innocent individuals. This is Michael Lowe, a man whose troubles began on May 12, 2020, as he prepared to board an American Airlines flight at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport in Texas, heading to Reno, Nevada. Unbeknownst to him, another traveler at the airport had allegedly stolen jewelry from a duty-free kiosk, and fate would have it that both Lowe and the culprit ended up on the same flight. Meanwhile, DFW Airport Police launched an investigation into the reported burglary. Unfortunately for Lowe, he was unaware that a warrant had been issued for his arrest in connection with the incident. Fast forward to July 4, 2021, during his vacation in Tucumcari, New Mexico, where Lowe was enjoying 4th of July celebrations. Little did he know that his freedom was about to be abruptly halted. To his shock, Lowe was taken into custody, spending a grueling 17 days behind bars in a New Mexico jail. He has no idea. He is literally plucked out of, uh, of a July 4th celebration and stuck in a in a jail, a, a small county jail. In, in uh, the jail conditions were horrible. People screaming, fighting, uh, violence. It was filthy. Uh, it smelled of urine. The facilities were just really, really bad. It wasn't until authorities compared surveillance photos with Lowe's image that they realized they had made a grave mistake. Acknowledging their error, they promptly released him. In response to this unjust ordeal, Michael Lowe has filed a lawsuit against American Airlines, accusing them of negligence and seeking compensation for the mental, physical, and financial damages he endured during his wrongful imprisonment. While American Airlines denies any wrongdoing, stating their compliance with legal obligations. In November 2021, Nia Wims, a 13-year-old from Florida, found herself unjustly arrested and falsely accused of making threats of violence against her school. The false accusation resulted from a fellow student impersonating her on Instagram and making threats against the school. As a result, Nia was detained for a troubling 14 days based on the mistaken allegations. I think should we have um, taken the time to investigate thoroughly before introducing trauma to any child at all. I feel distance, like I really don't want to talk to anybody. She wanted to become police officer and now she's telling me she don't she doesn't want to do it anymore because she feel like she was um, treated so badly. However, a police investigation revealed that the IP addresses associated with the threats were linked to a 12-year-old classmate in the seventh grade. This classmate had created email addresses and Instagram accounts using Nia's name to carry out the threats against students and staff at Renaissance Charter School. In response to the ordeal, Nia's family has taken legal action by filing a lawsuit against the school, Instagram, its parent company Meta, and the Pembroke Pines Police Department. That platform was used to frame Nia and caused her to be locked up. This is Bethany Faber. Faber was headed to Mexico to see her brother and goddaughter, but instead, Faber was arrested at LAX when police believed she was a different woman with the same name terrifying absolutely terrifying i was you know shocked i it just kept getting worse honestly i kept saying that you that they had the wrong person and to double check and they just said yep yeah, nope we have it bethany kaylee farber Faber was taken into custody by the TSA due to an arrest warrant for Bethany Faber in Texas. Immediately, all I could think was I've never been to Texas. The no bail warrant kept her locked up for 13 days in jail. And she said, oh, you're not going anywhere. You will be here at least until court on Monday or Tuesday. Tragically, while Faber was incarcerated, her grandmother endured a stroke that her family believes was a result of the immense stress caused by the wrongful arrest. Sadly, a few days later, Faber's grandmother passed away. Faber and her attorney, Rodney Diggs, filed a lawsuit against the LAPD. All this done is because the LAPD failed to check a driver's license, a birth date, a social security, even the booking photo of the other Bethany Faber that you can see there's no relation to it, nothing. Like 